So Colin, what's our last film? The last film is Low Blow. The deadliest weapon is still your fist. That's and and my, what a fist he has. Play by the rules and you will lose. Well, that's unfortunate. Wait, he's Leo Fong, a martial arts expert who holds the explosive power of lightning in his hands. Lethal weapons ready to strike at a moment's notice. That's Leo Fong? Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Okay, here's your money. Ah, no go! Hey, forget the sandwich. Oh my god. <laughs> This is, this, is, this is great. Fong answers the call to battle as the streets of San Francisco explode with action. Troy Donahue, Cameron Mitchell, and Cameron Mitchell is a mascot, even if he's yeah, let us down yeah. most more often than not lately. And Akosua Buzia, the color purple, star in the searing thriller from the makers of Kill Point. <laughs> the music just starts before we even see action is oh, yeah. happening. <laughs> he knows, that's how he knows. He hears the music. <laughs> Get them! <laughs> Get them, Lobo! <laughs> when a wealthy businessman needs to rescue his daughter from the grasp of a mind-controlling cult, he knows who to call. Leo Fong! Fong wastes no time in assembling an awesome display of firepower, recruiting an underworld all-star team featuring the toughest vigilantes and mercenaries ready to do battle with a ruthless array. And then I can't read anything else because it has the Blockbuster uh, sticker on it. <sighs> blockbuster ruined everything. Something, something, something. They low blow. <laughs> <laughs> and the picture on the back is amazing because it's got, I'm assuming that's Leo Fong and he's punching somebody and it makes it look like uh, they punched his head off. If, if no, I, that's not clearly not what's happening in that picture, yeah. and you look closely, but I do hope that somewhere in the movie he punches somebody's head off, or I will be disappointed. Yeah. Do you think he's going to have an oversized prosthetic hand for the entire movie? <laughs> He'll be wearing like those foam Hulk hands. Yeah. Just one, though. <laughs> Just painted, <clears throat> painted flesh color. Yeah. Low blow. Low blow. Stunt driver Cameron Mitchell. <laughs> it's not an action scene, Mr. Rowe. It's like this calming music. <laughs> wow. He just got bored. <laughs> what is happening? He doesn't get it. He doesn't give no fucks. <laughs> <laughs> this, guy, this is like the best action hero. He is the polar opposite of blood death. <laughs> All right. So the final movie that we watched tonight was Lublum. Lublum. <laughs> uh, not starring this guy. Not even co-starring this guy. Uh, who is that guy in the movie? This guy? Yeah. He's not in the movie. Oh, that's weird. What? What happens in Low Blow, Jack? Low Blow is about uh, ex-detective Low Blow, who is now private investigator Low Blow. And he's a bit of a slob, and he's a bit loose with the parking rules, but he's hired to find a billionaire's daughter after she joins Cameron Mitchell's evilish cult. I say evilish because the cult doesn't seem to do anything that bad. No, they make people do general gardening. Yeah. They, they do take people's money. But to be fair, the people do sign the money over willingly. Yeah. Mm. And so he, uh, detect this is not Detective Loblaw. I should stop showing that picture. This is Detective Loblaw. Detective Loblo assembles a super team of fighters from various backgrounds. You got a boxer. You got a kickboxer, you got a knife guy, and you got a lady with muscles. He's, he's like the main character from the Miami Connection after 30 years of crippling depression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this movie is a celebration of laziness. Not, not, the yeah. no, not the filmmaking, but just the characters. Yeah. Because yeah. your main hero is a lazy slob 
who lives in a junkyard. It could house? go either way. Yeah, is this supposed to be his house? Oh my god. He his house is like a filthy dump. <laughs> <laughs> and the main villain is Cameron Mitchell, who we should point out, this is like Cameron Mitchell hitting rock bottom. Oh man. This is not like, a, he, some of the movies that we love with him were actually made after this. We looked it up. Uh, but this is him, like, he is half asleep. <laughs> he's half passed out. He does not move through the whole movie. They cut to him and he's just in a chair. He's always in a chair. He's always like half asleep and he doesn't look, he doesn't know where he's at. Probably so they could kind of like tie him to the chair so he to doesn't, sure he doesn't fall over, over yeah. or something. So that had nothing to do with anything. Well, now, now it's gonna, oh. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's where Cameron wants to sit today. <laughs> Both him, both Cameron Mitchell and uh, Leo Fong, mm -hmm. it feels like we're getting a glimpse into their reality. Like it's not just the characters; yeah. like it's their personal lives are informing the characters. Sure, yeah, and like Leo Fong was probably uh, a bigger star in his home country. He, he wasn't. I looked it up. Oh, well then why? I don't know. He's just the guy that tried to be Jackie Chan and oh. is terrible at it. Yeah, he really was. Oh. oh. <laughs> 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 and by the way, if only we would have known, we could have had a theme of like elderly vigilantes. Uh, if only we would have known before Blood Bloods. <laughs> you, I'm just the driver. To be fair, he does do all of his own stunts. <laughs> Uh, napping. Uh, yeah. Cameron Mitchell doesn't do his own stunts. There's one shot where he has to walk, and it's clear it's a stunt double. That's right. That's right. That's right. He got up from a bed. Yeah. He got up from a bed. That was his stunt. Oh, that's that's when he was wearing his his bed robe. His oh, just, yeah. just, just just his hood. <laughs> None of, yeah, this is all just Cameron Mitchell, and he's got a ro like a Palpatine robe on. But like one from like a, a, a dollar store. Yeah, and, and sunglasses, and he spends the whole movie slumped over, mumbling lines that are so incomprehensible that they had to hire another actor to say them again into a megaphone. <laughs> just keep the camera as far away from him as possible. <laughs> Please. Smells like booze. <laughs> so he can't see the stink lines coming off. <laughs> I wish she's reading his dialogue for him. <laughs> I, I do like when Cameron Mitchell was, was getting intimate with a lady, he still kept his robe and his sunglasses on. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just the robe, it wasn't attached to anything. No, no, it was, no, it was just the hood. Just the hood. He's like... Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh. He's just wearing the hood! <laughs> He's just wearing the hood! That's a different sleeping outfit. <laughs> This is his sex robe. <laughs> his, uh, what? <laughs> this is my sleeping hood. Mm, like mama used to wear. That's so how you know he's the bad guy. It was a hoodlum. What? So I wonder if that if that girl that like second in command who was like reading his line, do you think she was even in the actual She script? was just a PA. Who was like just would have to prop him up and bring him to set every yeah. morning, like? Rawr. No, she was. She, I, I will guarantee that she was not in the original script. Okay. As soon as Cameron Mitchell got to set, They're they, like, oh they my God. knew they needed someone immediately. Yeah. That's, that's not a bad running joke. <laughs> oh, but he's gonna beat him. <laughs> And be funny if the other guy just kept running. <laughs> Bye, <Jesus! laughs> I think he was trying to be like cool, aloof American. I think he was trying to be Fletch. Okay. And his lack of any sort of acting skill or basic comprehension of the English language just means charisma. that charisma. He was just like a black hole of charisma. He cared so little that he didn't even care about his driving. Nothing. That was the best part of the movie. It was. Once we realized that, well, at first we weren't sure it was a running gag, and then it just kept <laughs> happening. Yeah. His bad driving, although he is Chinese. No. You sicken me. Oh, 
You mean it's not really an opening scene so much as is some just things are happening all of a sudden. It's just you literally starts in the middle of like a, a robbery at a deli yeah. or something no like that. Yeah. No setup, no establishing shots, just and guys no, shooting. And no shotgun mic to record any sound. That's a running <laughs> gag in this movie is like there I couldn't hear any of the yeah, dialogue. The, the, yeah, the audio recording is bad. So so Leo Fong yeah. is working in an office and he overhears a ruckus. His detective senses go off. Yeah. <laughs> and he decides to help the ruckus. And the ruckus is an armed robbery at the local deli sandwich restaurant shop. Yes. And so our hero solves the problem. Slowly walking in. Hey, if I have that ready. Sit down, son. This audio is terrible. Is this our hero? Yeah. yeah. This old man? Yeah. Like, by murdering everyone. <laughs> yeah. It would have been more in character for him to try and finagle a free sandwich out of him. <laughs> like, what, wouldn't it have been great if the only reason he stopped the robbery was so he could try and get a free sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> well, then we learn that he is an ex-police officer because he gets reamed out by his ex-police chief. But then I guess they decide that he's a lovable, scrappy dude. So they just, ah, you murdered some people. But go ahead. They give him his gun back. Yep. Yeah, well, that's the thing is like it, it sets up uh, a guy comes to him, rich white man comes to him and says, my daughter was abducted by this cult. She's been brainwashed by this cult. I want her back. I will give you a shitload of money to do that. Mm -hmm. He goes into the cult. Mm -hmm. uh, they're listed in the phone book. Of course. So then he drives there and then he gets beat up and he leaves. Mm -hmm. And then nothing related to that happens for a good 30, 45 minutes. Well, and a lot of this we're just piecing together, but I think I think there were some decent character moments in there. The bad driving, the fact that his car never starts and he has to like hit it with a... No, a, a it, it brings a tire iron out, out, it just hits the engine. Exactly. And that starts the car every time. Yeah. yeah. And he's got like a messy house, he's got this weird relationship with his secretary, who's also his wife, girlfriend, egg maker. And mother. <laughs> yeah. That's his mom. Yeah. Uh, why not? But so like with a better actor or I mean a better script, come on. Uh, this could have been a fun little character like the, the slob with the heart of gold, right? Yeah. The, the, the half-hearted detective. Yeah. I'll kind of do my job. <laughs> so he had no idea like he kept sort of showing up in these scenes and then sort of watching these fighters. So they had these two kind of uh, Latino guys like sort of knife fighting in the streets as they do. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Oh my God. What? Check your privilege. We just kind of assume that he's assembling a team that he will use later, even though he doesn't know yet that he will need a team. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing, he starts assembling them before he realizes like that the compound is so heavily guarded. I really think he just wanted to start an illegal fighting pit. Yeah. <laughs> which, which would be amazing and fun. Yeah. Billy Blanks is in the movie. Billy yeah. Blanks is in this movie. We didn't realize it till the credits. The Ty Bo guy. Yeah. And, and so is the child of Ron Jeremy and Andre the Giant. <laughs> <laughs> so Loblo finally decides that his grunts have done enough of the cleanup work. <laughs> he's gonna go in, he's gonna take care of the, the crumbs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so he, he starts infiltrating and you know does, does a little slow foo and eventually finds a guy who he really doesn't like. His head turned into a cake. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> It's so out of context it, for the movie. It's such an yeah. overtly violent move in a movie that hasn't had, I mean, other, you know, people are punching and stuff and he shoots people, but it's so subdued. And then just all of a sudden it's like. <laughs> oh yeah, and he's angry. He's just like. Yeah. And that was like right out of Miami Connection, like where they just start slashing. Yeah, you're like, where did, how did we get here? <laughs> why, that, why that one guy? Yeah, he, yeah, it's not even the main boss. Um, so they show up at uh, Loblo's dump of a house, which is actually uh, a dump. Yeah, and we're, we're convinced that Loblo is a homeless man yeah. because he's just squatting yeah. here. He has a giant piece of wood on his porch. Oh no, knocking them over didn't work. <laughs> Run away. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Oh. Hit it with a tire iron! <laughs> 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 <Hit it. laughs> they have guns! No, he, I think he took them away this time. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the only time he's had any expression in the whole movie. 
But they paid 50 bucks for that car, so yeah. <laughs> he was really excited about this. <laughs> They gotta, they gotta make it. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, this is probably just a junk car that was out there anyways. <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> he's like, he's like, what's this fucking... <laughs> <laughs> he just Wait, put on safety oh, goggles. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he's gonna like, cut the top off. <laughs> just because they can. <laughs> <laughs> They're really getting their money's worth. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. Uh, and then spends like three hours cutting off the roof of their car. <laughs> like there is clearly a lighting change. Oh, there's a time jump. Like yeah. there's a huge time jump. He, he spends some time cutting off the roof of their car. You need an insert shot of them in the car just like looking at their watch. Like <laughs> I mean, he's still he's still going. Like shaving. Yeah. yeah like, so what's the plan when he finally gets this thing off? I, I, don't I, I guess we'll just run away. And then they just run away. See, I think, I think most people are just used to martial artists being like really fast. Mm -hmm. So he's so slow, you know, they, they just block too fast. <laughs> what, what, oh no, ah! Yeah, yeah. So he saves the girl, he goes into the, the, the girl's being held, or the billionaire's daughter is being held in the uh, like hospital at the cult or something like right. that. Um, the cult that we still don't know what they did that was so evil. And then th they get paid for murdering people. Yep. Which is a normal thing that heroes do. Meets the billionaire, gives the daughter back. He meets the billionaire at another dump. Every house in this movie is like a dump. <laughs> yeah, but that was like a fancy, that was like a two-story dump. Yeah. So, you know, they're moving on up. I, I assume that's the larger dump that Loblo bought with his, <laughs> with his money. <laughs> and then we, we end on the nice final character gag of the, his, he wants to go to Vegas, he's got all this money, but that darn car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's well, and you had said like this would be great oh, if they God. just held on this for the entire credits, and then they did. <laughs> well, he didn't, we, even, he didn't even know the the they were going to do the engine sound that he said. Yeah, if they just do it through the entire credits. Yeah, and that's 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 actually so like funny and clever that I was convinced there was no way the movie would actually do yeah. it. <laughs> but they did. And they did. To right the movie's the credit, end. they did. Everything involving that car was clever and great. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was like something out of another movie. I think the car had more character than Lobo. <laughs> It's like the car wrote his own scenes. <laughs> the car gets ready, just crossing out lines. Like, what if I? What if I do this? Like, what if I hit? I'm gonna. I'm gonna hit the curb. <laughs> I think that'd be funny. Take this. I need to take for me. It's true. Her. If you think of the car as a character, he like stole every scene he was in. <laughs> Low Blow is just his partner. Yeah. Oh, it's a buddy cop movie. Low Blow oh, is a rusty awesome. old car. Low Blow outacted by a car. <laughs> <laughs> really true. <laughs> That's not an exaggeration, right? No. No. No, you have to hit it under the hood, blow blow. Just end like this. <laughs> <laughs> the credit's going up while the, the car starting noises. <laughs> oh my god, it's gonna happen. That might oh, happen. Oh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ready. So the last tape that you have selected, yes. so this is all on you, mm. is Kill Point. So tell us why you chose to select Kill Point. Well, uh, there's two, one, two, three reasons. I'm gonna have to think of a third, actually. I only have two. It's one <laughs> is that the, uh, the, the box art is actually pretty cool. I like the painted quality of it. Heavily referenced, but well executed. Uh, and two, the cast. Uh, the cast has Cameron Mitchell, and it has Richard Roundtree, and it has other people in it too. Uh, other other people? Yeah, other people. Um, but the back of it does have an awesome piece of clip art of a gun. That's not painted. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> but uh, Leo Fong. Now, Captain, I got some information you don't have. I talked to a guy who knows a guy who knows something about the organization. I have a meeting with him tomorrow afternoon. Why is his face flat? <laughs> <laughs> he looks so bad. Joe Marks, Cameron Mitchell, so he's, he's top build. Yes. So he's going to be in the movie for two minutes. 
and Nighthawk, Stack Pierce. Never heard of that fucker. He's gonna be in the whole fucking film. <laughs> Steal enough machine guns, grenades, and rocket launchers to outfit a small army from the National Guard Armory. When the word hits the streets, criminals and gangs from all walks of life surface to buy the black market artillery to build up their own private arsenals. Have fun. And we're here to hit the Julio. Oh, really? Like children and. Holy and, shit! Oh my god, okay. Oh, wow! Oh, oh. oh, Jesus Christ! The result is a brutal killing spree that takes LA by the throat. To combat the relentless wave of violence, a special task force is formed by police special agent Bill Bryant, Richard Roundtree, and Lieutenant James Long, Leo Fong. Follow the trail of blood as the two law enforcers fight violence with violence and declare war on an unstoppable army of sadistic yes. assassins. Yes. That sounds great. That's what I'm talking about. This is that the guy's most awesome. Violent movie I've ever seen. <laughs> Our next film is Kill Point. Rich, tell us all about Kill Point. Well, well, Kill Point is a film starring our old friend Leo Fong, better known as Loblo. In the film, Cameron Mitchell teams up with Nighthawk, who is some kind of badass criminal, to steal a bunch of bazookas from the US government. <laughs> then they sell those bazookas onto the street, and then Cameron Mitchell has a small dog, and he beats up a woman until she dies. Anyway, Cameron Mitchell sells the guns, Leo Fong is a cop, he's gotta find out who's selling the guns, and, and Shaft is there until he's not. <laughs> and then everybody shoots at everybody else every 10 seconds. Is Loblo the protagonist of this movie? No, but in my head, this is the Loblo prequel. We're like a, a fit, buff Loblo who's still on the force, you know, yeah. he's, he's doing his cop thing before he gets kicked off and he's, he's kind of depressed for a while and he lets himself go and he gets, he gets fat and lazy and he has to start up a detective agency to make the ends meet. Sure. And somehow he unlearns how to drive. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the alcohol's fault. Wasn't it the most upsetting thing in the world when Leo Fong successfully parked a car? Yeah, it was. It <laughs> really was. If you're confused at all about what we're talking about, check out this episode. And don't forget to click subscribe and like. Smash that like button. <laughs> Smash that like button and follow us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> So Lo, you mentioned Loblo is buff in this movie. He's, he's got some muscles. He's, 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 a, he's a tough looking dude. He's, he's got muscles and he has Uma Thurman's hair from Pulp Fiction, yeah. which I, is I, very so off-putting. I was thinking Conan, like classic kind of comic book Conan. Okay, sure. Yeah, he's, he's a pretty buff dude. He's in good shape. It's just a shame about his face though. <laughs> <laughs> he's a butter there face. Are, He's got, he's, he's got Did like, you say he's a butterface? Butter Did he's you call Loblo a butterface? Butter Rich doesn't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. No, see, he doesn't. Okay, <laughs> I'll explain it. It's, it usually is used if a woman is very attractive and always butt her face. Uh, so so butter like face. super hot body, butter face. She's got a butter face. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they say she has a butter face. I I'd, I'd almost call it like a Frankenstein face because it looks like he's got like eyes, <laughs> eyes from two different corpses. <laughs> And this is that, that dead, vacant stare. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Tommy Lee Jones' beautiful skin. <laughs> and there are some deep, lingering, luscious close-ups of his face in this yeah, condition. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But the next glorious shootout takes place in what looks like a very accurate or usable, real grocery store. Oh, Ooh, shoot, okay. grocery store? <laughs> oh, it's a grocery <laughs> store. Shoot them all! Shoot it up! Kill that grandma. Oh, this, here we go. Oh my God, I this love this. This is great, This, this is yes. big. This is so great. No witnesses. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my. oh, that was a nice one. A full grocery store. They even break eggs in this thing. They break <laughs> eggs in the grocery store. They even store. break eggs. <laughs> but there was something about the movie, elegantly bad. Yeah. I can't, it's hard to describe. 
You know what? They, they kept the expository shit uh, too, like, quick. Yes. I want you to get that guy, Leo DiGiulio, tonight. I don't want nobody else to sell guns in my territory. It was, we're, we're making this badass movie and we don't care. Yeah. Right. And we're pulling it off flawlessly. Besides the lieutenant, who literally is reading his lines. Say, so, listen, you know the uh, shooting that we had in the Chinese restaurant? Well... You think he's reading his lines from something up there? <laughs> Got uh, automatic weapons, according to our ID people, and a lot of 223 brass lying around. And I'm wondering if this might tie in with the oh. staring <laughs> up at a cue card that's off screen, and then later he's like, "Yeah, I got a message for you," and it says, and yeah. he just reads the entire. Well, the message. cue card was too far away. Like that was still kind of a pain in the ass for him to read. So that's when he's like, "Can I just have a cue card right in front of my face?" Yeah. It yeah. just kept getting worse and worse. Yeah, <laughs> that guy stood out. Yeah. Yeah. But Cameron Mitchell, I guess we should talk about Cameron Mitchell. Uh, he's doing his Mr. Roper cosplay throughout the whole film. Uh, he's got an ascot in every scene, even when he's not wearing a shirt. He's got that ascot on. It is an important And ascot. then he has a tiny dog until he doesn't. A, t a dog he tries to get to smoke. He tries to get it to smoke, he tries to get it to drink, and then he... In the, in the hot tub. In the hot tub the where, he, in the hot where tub. he almost drowns it. And, and then at some point, apparently off screen, the dog dies. <laughs> because Cameron In a scene Mitchell we don't see. is walking down a hallway with a monologue going on. His mouth isn't moving. It's like inner thoughts. I really, I really miss that dog. Out of nowhere. <laughs> Out of nowhere this happens. And that's when we were like, did they just not have enough footage to finish the movie? No, no, no. The elderly woman that owned the dog just said, I don't want that crazy man touching my dog anymore. <laughs> He almost drowned the dog in the oh, hot tub. Right. Yeah. We're taking the dog away. It's the hot tub scene where he's got like a flower behind each ear. Yeah. And, then, and one in the dog's ear. And then one in the dog's ear. And it's like, that was probably his choice. <laughs> you want to believe that. Yeah, I want to believe that that was Cameron Mitchell's decision as an actor. Uh, I wouldn't say decision, I would say demand. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 um, Check. Damn it. Cameron Mitchell, drunk, belligerent, confused, right. elderly, incapacitated, in a wicker chair. Oh, in a, in a wicker world, throw. Like, an oversized wicker <laughs> throw. <laughs> a game of wicker thrones. <laughs> okay, we've gone this far and only mentioned the name of my favorite character in the movie, and that is Nighthawk. Okay, so he is Cameron Mitchell's right-hand man, basically his lieutenant or his enforcer. And the true opening of the film is Nighthawk basically taking a bunch of bazookas and guns, but he does it by just bursting, like within the first several seconds of the film, he just bursts in and kills an army guy that's on, uh, that's on guard. Then he stealthily and awesomely cuts the alarm system, and then the weapons are his, right? Throughout the course of this film, he just got cooler and cooler. I couldn't help but keep rooting for him. Um, <laughs> the only way I wanted him to be defeated was with you know, the basically Shaft going in a, a, a mano a mano fight. That's the only thing that I wanted to happen. I wanted Nighthawk to get away to fight another day or just basically be a crime lord on his own. He was just too cool. I knew, I figured that they were, because in the setup of this scene, they're in the same bar. And uh, Nighthawk is so cool. He has a way to detect if this is a cop or not. He looks over at Shaft, he doesn't know this guy. He thinks there might be something fishy. So he sends over, so uh, Nighthawk sends over one of his gals. One of his hoes, come on. Go check him out. Let's be, if you let's will. be specific. Let's here. be politically correct. <laughs> it was a hoe. And she walks over and makes like a fake pass at Shaft. And, and I think she feels down, she, feels she, down she can tell his gun, yeah. okay, or the badge, and immediately knows that he's a cop, and, and right away, there's a shootout between <laughs> Nighthawk and Shaft. Oh, you sure's a luscious man, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, well, once you back off, I oh, am not hustling, baby. okay? Oh. oh, shit, Nighthawk is the police! Whoa! Oh, holy shit! He does not mess around! <laughs> shit. Oh, no! On the subject of Nighthawk being awesome, we're forgetting to mention the scene where Cameron Mitchell's wife slash an unrelated madam comes to Cameron Mitchell, who's in bed with the dog, yes. and says, you killed one of my ladies. You slapped her around after you asked her to sing. And then Nighthawk comes in and goes, no, bitch, I killed her. <laughs> he didn't kill her, sweetheart. And then 
She pulls out a little Derringer pistol. A Derringer. And shoots Nighthawk right through the kidneys. <laughs> and Nighthawk's just like, bitch, please! <laughs> <laughs> He is completely unharmed yeah, right. by a bullet wound to this to the gut. He's fine. He's, He's fine. Yeah, it's never he doesn't again. even go to the hospital. <laughs> no. He just continues on yeah. with being a badass. He is a badass. Uh, Cameron Mitchell has a great capper for that scene because he's like, now she's bleeding on my bed. Get in the john and wash it off. It's only a 22 for Christ's sake. Cameron Mitchell and Nighthawk make this fucking movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Leo Fong, uh, uh, low blow, doesn't do a whole lot interesting in this movie. I talked to a guy who knows a guy who knows something about the organization. He's not charismatic, he's not like Charles Bronson cool, he's just boring, he's not a particularly good martial artist. The only he's thing he has okay. going for him is, is a nice uh, set of bangs. <laughs> No, but in this film, they used at least three racial uh, slangs against him. It was always either Nighthawk or Cameron Mitchell, yeah. which was unusual to hear. But it's like they, they, I think there was even a scene where they just had to like dig it in just at the end. And it was like, okay, that's it. Now you can go. The man asked you a question, Chinaman. I got everything you need, Chinaman. You chink's going to take over. It's like they just kept throwing it out there. Um, I think Cameron Mitchell was just like, keep rolling until I get everything I want <laughs> out of the scene. Yeah, he was just ad-libbing. We'll call you. Slant eyes. He was just getting back at them for uh, WWII. <laughs> <laughs> I lost so many friends in Iwo Jima. <laughs> I gotta get it all out in this picture. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fourth generation American. I don't care. <laughs> Slant eyes. You got the eyes, boy. <laughs> <laughs> the booze is talking. It. The booze and the bad memories are talking. Oh, the booze is really kicking it now. <laughs> so the guy that low blow beats up and then yeah. puts into the insane asylum padded yes. cell. Yeah. That that guy was wearing my jacket. Oh, that's right. the way that I identified him and remembered him so fondly. He was wearing that jacket. He got hit by a car by low blow, yes, knocking right. him down. Yes. It was very it was almost like it was an actually a low blow movie for a second. Yes. Because he hit somebody with his car on accident, on accident. who just he, happened to be a criminal. Happens to be Coming around the corner at the right moment and then gets out and they start kicking and punching. And Loblo punches him so hard that the shoulders on his shirt rip open. <laughs> Cameron Mitchell has his, his weird monologue where you, you can't understand what he's saying. But oh, where they just filmed footage of him and came up with dialogue later? Yeah. He's walking for a few minutes and we, we can't really hear what they're saying because the tracking on our copy was just garbage. But we, we, maybe we can find clean audio somewhere. We'll have this, this beautiful Cameron Mitchell monologue. We'll get the Kill Point Blu-ray. I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> but, I, I can't wait to hear the movie. <laughs> It's me, alone, nuts or otherwise, against the whole friggin' world. Cameron Mitchell walks to like the, the limo that Nighthawk is in, and the monologue, what I could make out is, I'm gonna run this empire on my own, it's just gonna be just me, and he, he's, he's ordering a headstone for his, his dead dog. I want you to get a tombstone for the little dog, a nice one, okay? With her name and the day she, you know what I mean. And then at that moment, Nighthawk is fed up. And Cameron Mitchell's talking about his dog headstone <laughs> while the window is slowly going up. And he doesn't, he doesn't even think to move his fingers, just... Look on his face, he's gonna kill Cameron Mitchell. Oh, she's gonna do it. Oh! Yeah. But you move your hands! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, fuck! Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> Well, to, to, to be really clear, it wasn't Cameron Mitchell's rambling about uh, wanting a headstone for his dog that sent Night, Nighthawk over the edge. It was the prior scene when Cameron Mitchell is in like a, like a diner and there is a, a waitress who is babbling. Oh God. I mean, this is impor an important God. scene. Yes. Yeah. Cameron Mitchell wants another refill on his coffee and this waitress is just babbling like, I had a baby and my baby is in the back of the kitchen. You hear the baby off camera just screaming. And she's like, blah, 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 blah. And, and this is where we discover that Cameron Mitchell is, is uh, misogynist. He hates women. He wants to choke them to death. You know what I did to my old lady? I slapped her. She says I hate crying women. 
And it keeps like building up, building up, building up. And we're like, shut up that kid. Oh, another thing. <laughs> This is gonna be the greatest Cameron Mitchell moment ever. Come on, come on. Oh, do tape, it. don't mess up. We found ourselves rooting for Cameron Mitchell to murder a woman and a baby. <laughs> that's, that's the dark place this movie took us. We're like, this is going to be the definitive Cameron Mitchell scene. Yeah. This is gonna define him. It's getting louder! <laughs> Come on, Cameron. Don't let us down. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it, You can Cameron. do it, Cameron. It would have been like the final boundary yes. if he had crossed this yes. finish line. Yeah. 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 Do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Fucking kill that baby. Kill that baby. Kill that woman. <laughs> Close up of the mouth. <laughs> Shoot the kid. Great. Shoot the kid. <laughs> And then, uh... He know. kills her by shoving her fingers in the yeah. cash register? Yeah, and then, yeah. and then I think he chokes her. He chokes her. And then, and then Nighthawk's come like, oh god. When he, he walks in, you can tell he's just like, I've got to clean up this mess. Yes, too. I've got to clean up yeah. this mess now. And then that leads into Cameron Mitchell getting his fingers crushed <laughs> in the limo window, and Nighthawk has had enough. So then we get a bunch of shots of people on rooftops shooting guns. Yeah. and unrelated shots of people that look like thugs falling over. Right. And they just sort of intercut all these yeah. shots together. You don't know who is doing what or where they are in relationship to each other. Spatial no. relationships are thrown out the Everything's window. Everything's out the window, but then Leo Fong kicks a guy for a bit. You, I'm just assuming at that point, they eventually stop showing where Nighthawk is. You just assume he's gotten away. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping for, <laughs> is he's just gotten away. They're gonna cut to him on a boat or something, yeah. and it's gonna be like, oh no, I can't believe he got away. Um, is somebody who looks suspiciously like Nighthawk gonna show up in a comic book you draw in the future? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's uh, I mean, opening the suitcase on a boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's my own fan fiction of how Nighthawk has escaped, yeah. Well, eventually Loblo catches up with Nighthawk, and he just kind of shoots him. We have this awesome fight with a complete nobody. Exactly. And then Loblo just kind of shoots him, and then we cut to a close-up of another gun that also shoots Nighthawk. Redundantly. Redundantly, because Loblo has already shot him to the point where he's not going to move anymore. And we're like, who had that other gun? Who had that other gun? It's going to be- Shaft's coming back. It's going to be Shaft, Shaft right? Shaft dead. Who shot him? Shaft with, like, is going to have bandages on. Oh, that would, okay, that would redeem it. Yeah. If yeah. it's Shaft. Shaft's still alive. Okay. And then it's just Cameron Mitchell with a slit throat. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> his ascot is the only yes. thing holding his head on his neck. <laughs> but but like logically, low blow uh, is running at uh, uh, Nighthawk, and Nighthawk has the gun, and yeah. low blow goes, "Gotcha, Nighthawk." Oh no, you know, and Nighthawk's like, yeah. And then the shot comes. Right, right, right. But really it's like, Loblo shot him 16 times. And then we cut one second of and a close-up of yes, another gun. Number yeah. 17. Yeah. Out of 16. He's redeemed by killing a guy who killed Cameron Mitchell so he could no longer kill women and babies. <laughs> <laughs> it's straight up bizarre. <laughs> Never felt better. Well, Rich, our last film, the much anticipated sequel to Low Blow, <laughs> Blood Street. It looks like Low Blow's hair is about to fly off when he's doing this kick here. Well, because it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is more action than he, than he did at all in Low Blow. <laughs> So why don't you tell us about Blood Street? Uh, before I tell you anything, I'm, I, have, I have one major, major worry. This is a nice car. Oh, Low yeah. Blow, Low Blow shouldn't drive a nice car. No, he needs his piece of shit. <laughs> he needs his piece of shit. Blood Street's fast-paced action sets the mean streets of San Francisco ablaze. Joe Wong, Leo Fong, <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying. 
Like they're worried he wouldn't respond to an. He, well, he made the movie, and he's worried he won't respond to a name that's not his own. Yes, a name that sounds similar <laughs> his to his real name, so he remembers to react to it. Yeah. <laughs> his streetwise private investigator, hired by the seductive Vanna McDonald, Playboy centerfold Kim Page, to trace the mysterious disappearance of her husband. What seems to be a routine case quickly turns the streets bloody red with violence as Joe unwittingly steps into a lethal crossfire between the two biggest drug lords in history. Joe soon realizes that it was Vanna herself who orchestrated the entire bloodbath. Spoiler! And it's up to him alone to find the courage to bring justice back to the streets of San Francisco. Action sequences directed by world karate champion George Chung. I just want to know who directed the, the scenes with Rod Stewart. <laughs> Throw him off the fucking building! Oh! 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 He shot his yes, foot off! Yes, he shot his foot off! <laughs> Still don't know what you're talking about. Then let me refresh your memory. I think that's a knife. <laughs> oh! Oh, the scene's over. Oh, oh, wait. oh, wait, now we're back! Oh, God! Wait. Was that an accident? <laughs> a little piece of film got caught in between the scenes. <laughs> not, not stylistic editing. The, 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 next we watched Blood Street. Last we watched. Blood Street is a very special movie <laughs> in that I think Jack is the only human being on this planet who could even come close to telling you what the fuck happened. All of my superpowers. Jack doesn't even know. Very <laughs> special movie. I just hate that I, I have to follow up Faust with Faust. Blood Street. Faust. I'm sorry, you're the only man for the job. And you know what? I, you would think that this would be a, a bit of a disappointment after Tit Puddle. <laughs> <laughs> but Leo Fong pulls it out again. He does. And again and That's again. That's what she said. <laughs> That's what the, all the actresses in the film said. None of their uteruses work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay, this, well, okay, for anyone that doesn't know, we watched a movie called Low Blow, and this is the sequel to Low Blow, so we're gonna call his character Low Blow. Are you gonna start talking about God, no, yet? I've been putting it off! Okay, no, it's... <laughs> like, the story is so simple, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's detective noir fan fiction starring Joe Fong. Uh, in which he, Joe, Leo, Leo Fong. Fong, Joe Wong Joe is the character. Leo, Leo Fong, Fong is a Mary actor. Sue. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. It's, it's Leo Fong starring as Joe Wong, who is low blow. <laughs> Get it together. <laughs> How could I ever confuse the things? So he's a hard-boiled detective. He's a private detective, and a sexy lady comes in, whips out a tit, and says, <laughs> "Find my husband." This is a real thing that happens in the movie. <laughs> she then puts her tip back in. Uh, and so I think next he goes into a bar and murders people. <laughs> <laughs> he goes into a bar with the express purpose of ordering a Shirley Temple. Shirley Temple? Man, that's a little boy's drink. Well, you're not old enough to drink, Kane. What the fuck? He just murdered a guy. Oh, he, <laughs> <laughs> he just asked why you're drinking a Shirley Temple. <laughs> okay, bye. But, uh, why did you go in there? <laughs> he just straight up um, murdered a guy. <laughs> and so he, then he goes to uh, more places. There's more murder. He murders. <laughs> There's more murder. <laughs> Everywhere he goes, he leaves a trail of blood behind him. But I mean, him. it's not like he kills everyone. It's pretty casual, just every now and then. You know him? I have no recollection. I'm sorry, I can't help you, my man. Be a liar. An ugly liar. Okay, Slant Eyes, and you're next. Stop murdering people! He keeps killing! 
<laughs> that guy didn't even do anything. That guy was just some plain nurse. <laughs> no, Leo, stop. He's, he's a madman. He's already dead. He has some kind of <laughs> hidden rage. <Yeah. laughs> Well, it's a formula. It's it's uh, punch guy, punch guy, and or kick guy, murder guy. Murder someone. Someone that's in the room. But it's very casual and laid back. It's not, he doesn't make a big deal out of it. The cops don't make a big deal out of it. Yeah. The owners of the establishments don't seem to care. Just dead bodies piling up. They do um, want him to replace that dart, though. Yeah, it's got some blood. At least just yeah. clean it off, yeah. you know. So while Loblo is looking for the husband, there is dueling drug lords and their hench people, including Nighthawk. Yes, Nighthawk. Ni Nighthawk, Nighthawk Kill from... Kill Point. Kill yes. Point. Uh... And don't bleed over my car. Yeah. Which that, is not, which is a Leo Fong movie, but it is not low blow. He's not playing the same <laughs> character. <laughs> yeah. He might as well be playing the same character, but he's not. Nighthawk is, is maybe my favorite. He's so cool. Is it Nighthawk or is it Eddie Murphy? Hey, look, man, don't play dumb with us, okay? We got some money, we want to buy some stuff. You want to do a deal? We can do a deal. Yeah. I mean, the best Eddie Murphy impersonator around. Don't think Eddie Murphy's in my movie. <laughs> Why does Leo Fong sound like a sleazy <laughs> producer? Find me the best Eddie Murphy impersonator around. And he sounds like Eddie Murphy. He looks like Eddie Murphy. He's wearing full leather outfits. He, he and we, we found out after the movie. Yeah. We looked up. He's a stunt coordinator. Mm -hmm. Not for this movie, yeah. though. Not for, Not this, for this movie. movie. But he's a stunt coordinator. Leo Fong was the stunt coordinator yeah. for this movie. He's done a ton of movies, and he has never been Eddie Murphy's stunt <laughs> double. <laughs> Or even fucking stand in. <laughs> or even his friend. <laughs> he tried once and Eddie Murphy told him to fuck off. <laughs> okay, so Low Blow murders people to find the husband, and as it turns out, the husband is um, getting constant massages. <laughs> <laughs> And slapping black women around. Yeah. And, and Nighthawk is not having He's that. He's not having that. He's, you slap all these other biddies, not that yes. one. So. You slap that girl again. And he I'm said, gonna wreck your uterus. <laughs> 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 he, says, he says, yeah, I'm gonna wreck your world. And, and then uh, McDonald. That's the husband. MacDonald is, yeah. is the husband, who's played by a man who's doing an Italian accent, who looks Italian who sounds like um, Joe Mantegna. Don't have a cow. Mm. Don't have a cow in the toilet. Put a deuce on him. And it's played by a German actor. We know that because the end credits of the movie, they say what, where all the actors are from for some bizarre reason. As, as hard to follow as the movie is, that is the most baffling part. I hate to jump <laughs> right to the end. But nothing has wrecked me more than listing the city and state that the actors live in. It's strange. It's very strange. MacDonald, the husband we're looking for, is actually one of the drug lords. Which we would have known if they had... If, I guess if we'd been paying attention. <laughs> they showed us a picture of what the husband looked like. Well, Leo Fong yeah, he had, had a picture. We never got to see it, though. <laughs> There's one scene where he, Leo Fong is in the far distance. It's like a comedy shot. And he's like, like posing on a rock. And then he walks up to Big Bad Guy and he's like, have you seen this man? And we can't, we're like, what? What are we looking at? And then the guy's like, I haven't him. seen that man. And then they, they just punch. I saw him. And then Leo Fong just walks back where he came from, and it's all one shot, and it's just <laughs> beautifully choreographed. They're filming without permits. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so as we as we go down our our detective spiral here, the low blow rabbit hole, as they call it. That's exactly what they call it <laughs> in film school when you when you take your semester on low blow. Yeah. <laughs> Plots that make no sense. Check it. <laughs> the low blow effect. <laughs> Leo Fong's dementia. <laughs> Early onset dementia. Who, who teaches that class? The partner's guy? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you why this plot makes total sense. <laughs> this movie's brilliant.
while low blow is searching for mcdonald who is a drug lord getting massages over we... one billion cracks sold <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Like, yeah, like hamburgers. I get it, yeah. Like hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jay's laughing more of how terrible your joke was, <laughs> as opposed to how funny it was. It's fine. No, it works. And now is that a check mark? It's great. That gets a check mark. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, hey. That, that gets a check mark. So Rich is up to two to like, like a hundred trillion. That's almost like it's so bad it comes back around <laughs> to get a check mark. It I like it. Yeah. I like it. Uh, we are into, so uh, Massages, Low Blow's looking for husband. On the other side of the spectrum, we have Rod Stewart, who is running a uh, underground boxing fight ring in his living room. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so isn't that the, that cage fight scene, isn't it also like, there's a cage fight on one side of the room, and the other side of the room is like a fancy party? Right? Well, the fancy party is watching the cage fight. You right. never know because you never see them all in one establishing shot. Sure, but then like people in masks come into the room with shotguns and shoot and then run out of the frame. Is he on like painkillers or something? <laughs> Oh, yeah. The slider is fine now. Yeah. Where are the guys who are shooting people? And why were they shooting? Where do they go? And then we cut, and that's the end of the scene. Every scene ends like that. <laughs> and then that happens multiple times. And we're like, who are these people in the masks? So in the Leo Falls... So yeah, the drug business is very competitive. <laughs> like, it's really hard to write a scene. <laughs> Take cover of the women. <laughs> Who's who is this? What's happening? <laughs> what was that? What happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They got to film in a nightclub for five minutes. They're gonna make the best of it. <laughs> That's the second time people in masks have run into the room and shot guns, and then the scene just ends. Leo Fong is just, he's just very bad at ending scenes. He doesn't know he doesn't know what else to do. The bad guys run uh, in and shoot. Bad guys run in and shoot people. Yeah. Well, that's I had said during the screening. It's like like I picture Leo Fong making this movie specifically so when there's like 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 Thanksgiving or Christmas when the whole family gets together, he can put his movie on and be like. <sighs> Maybe. The, the striking. Except for the creepy sex stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, at a minimum, though, because we compared uh, Leo Fong. This is a vanity project, but we compared him to like like Gedevin or like the Empire of the Dark guy, Tommy Wiseau. They're, they all have a, a gratuitous sex. They scene. all have a creepy, gratuitous uh, black tank top sex scene, and uh, Leo Fong avoids that. See, uh, this is pointless. I just picture Leo Fong behind the camera, like masturbating. Yeah. That's all, yeah. He's not having the sex scenes because his fetish is he'd rather be watching someone else. <laughs> oh, okay. That explains a lot of scenes in this movie, then. Do you remember the 15 minute interlude where we get uh, Low Blow's backstory where his daughter is murdered? And Randomly. It has absolutely no payoff, and it is never mentioned again. In the middle of the movie, we cut to four years earlier. <laughs> In Texas. In Texas. This I, we don't know why we're in Texas. Is it footage from like an other movie that Leo Fong made that never got oh, finished? Very possible. That would make sense. Yes, yes, yes. Because it was pointless. Because yeah. it's it was... like, it, like dad, his daughter shows up. She's like, Dad, here's my new boyfriend. We're gonna go out now. And then they go outside, and the guy immediately starts punching him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and he punches the daughter so hard she dies. She's just lying there. There's a comically like flat, arms out evenly, and there's no blood. What was that called? That was like a like a thing like six seven years ago. Planking when you would just lay on the ground. <laughs> His daughter is planking, yeah. and then um, and then he goes to a bar and punches the people who punched his daughter, and then leaves. Well, he yeah, like an assembly line. <laughs> And he's just like, punch, <laughs> punch, punch. And then he gets to the bad one and punches him. And 
and then and then uh, we just cut back to modern day, and it's never mentioned again. No, no, near the end of the movie, you have Nighthawk say, "That was my son you murdered, who killed your daughter." Oh, uh, the, you know, but he you has, do that. He has two sons. Sure. Because Eddie Murphy was also. You can you can man can have two sons. <laughs> That's the thing. His wife's exists. uterus wasn't ruined by Satan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the woman's uterus was ruined by her father. Okay. <laughs> not Satan. Satan was unable to use her uterus as a vessel. <laughs> for, for Get your uterus destruction facts straight. Right? <laughs> oh, God. Get it together. Okay, okay, okay. Just calm down. You watch your stuff? Okay. Doesn't affect low blow. Oh my god! Oh my god! 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 Alright, alright, asshole. You can get out of here before I can do the next one. Curtain scene. He's just so bad! <laughs> the, the amazing, the, the, the interesting thing about this movie. Yeah. It's just how lazy it is compared to his other movies. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. I was like, whenever it would cut to a new scene, before anything would even happen, I would just start chuckling. And I wasn't even laughing at like, like the movie's so bad it's funny. I was just chuckling at how lazy and terrible everything was. Not specific things, just like the overall like effect. L low blow, like the original low blow. That's got a scene where he takes his foot and he crushes a man's skull. <laughs> yeah. His head turns into birthday cake. That's, that's, <laughs> the, the climax of Low Blow is him turning a man's head into a birthday cake. <laughs> I remember that. The, the I climax, remember that. The climax of this movie is he, he shoots Rob Stewart through an elevator door. Did you say yeah. Rob Stewart? Uh, Rod. I said Rob. <laughs> Oh, he's just dead. That was the, yep, that was the final confrontation. This is the laziest thing Leo <laughs> Fong has ever done. Not That's the climax of your gets, fucking film! He gets to the elevator, he's hit the button, and we're just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and five, and I, I think he thought Leo Fong was delusional. Yeah. He's, he's insane. <laughs> he, he thought that would be like, oh! I mean, he's still alive. He's still making movies. I know. It's what he weird. could he could theoretically come here and kick us in the face for making fun of him. If he's making another low blow, like I think all four of us, <laughs> we just need to be those guys that just come up to him and he. Oh, just, oh, oh I want to get a dart in the forehead. Yes, from low blow. I, Leo, let us be in your movie and kill I, us. Please, Leo, come on, contact come on. us. We'll pay just, for our own travel. We'll pay for everything. Yeah. We'll pay for the production budget of your film. <laughs> I just. I just want to get killed by by low blow. Yes, yes. And I, I think that would be a dream come true. I agree. That would be great. I want to get hit by his car. <laughs> you get run over by his car. You get a dart in the head. Okay. Uh, Jack bottle, broken bottle to the throat. Like, what do you want? Oh, sure. Maybe maybe he can bust out that single barreled shotgun. Oh, there you go. You just know, a nice like, squib. Yeah. Oh, I I, I want to get punched in the face. Sure. And thrown off a building. Oh sure, we can do this. It's a it's showdown. So shadow down. That's right. That's what it's called. Shadow down. Two sides of the street, one way to die. Directed by Leo Fong. <laughs> That's right, motherfucker. Leo Fong in the hizzy. Leo Fong, for anyone who doesn't remember, he's uh, he's low blow. Yeah, he's low blow, and uh, the other one. Oh yeah. The <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Leo Fong has not let us down yet. This is a first time for everything. Oh. A small southwestern town suddenly erupts into a war zone when a vicious motorcycle gang storms in. Sanctuary 
is not your ordinary town. Oh, ironic name. Oh. You get it? Uh, the violent town is called Sanctuary. Yeah. That's just that Leo Fong. He's a, a clever guy who... Shit. Oh my god! Oh my god, the town of Sanctuary, right? Its citizens are all retired gangsters. The entire town is retired gangsters. Yes! <laughs> Low blow! <laughs> Who now want to live in peace and forget their turbulent past. But Kincaid, the gang leader, decides it's an excellent haven for his lucrative fencing and drug trade. F fencing like... No, are you an idiot? Uh. Insult fences around houses. You fucking moron. That would make more money. Frustrating, frustrated, the local law enforcement agent known as the Commander, Richard Lynch, oh, not low blow. calls on his old friend, James Long. <laughs> <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder who plays James Long. Oh, he's got his own! He's got a bazooka, too. Why does he have a bazooka? <laughs> <laughs> Jay, everybody has a bazooka. <laughs> he just brought his from home. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't kill any of them. Okay. And they still have a trailer full of bazookas. I just blew up three crates. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay, the party's over. Ah! Leo! Leo, not the girls! Don't shoot the girls! If only you just waited, Leo, eventually they would shoot off the side. <laughs> You're about to do it. All right. So that was a fun movie. I'm just going to assume that Leo Fong, like, lazily kicks a bunch of people throughout the whole movie. It was great. Welcome to Best oh, of the Worst. Yeah. I was so close. Nobody I gave, I gave a moment. I, I gave well, a moment. I hit the table. Well, that doesn't mean anything. And then I was... I Is this was... some new rule that you've concocted? I would have, but I understand my fate. <laughs> Um, we watched two and one quarter, three and one quarter movies. Mm -hmm. uh, our first film was Showdown, uh, written, directed, and starring Leo Fong. Low blow! The, the legendary Leo Fong, That's who's right. been featured on this show. Multiple the, times! The fourth time. Three, well, this is the fourth, yeah. This is the fourth, yeah. Low blow. Kill point. Kill point. S Blood Street. Blood Street, yeah. That was the one we couldn't remember the name of. Even though Blood Street, he is also playing the same character as Low Blow, right? Yeah. I well, giving sure. his naming convention, I just assume he couldn't think of an other name yeah. that rhymed with Leo Fong. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who's introducing the film? Oh, Mike, explain Showdown. Why me? Why not? Someone's okay. got to do it. Uh, okay, so <laughs> Showdown stars, kind of stars Leo Fong as James Long, and there's a town in Nevada called Sanctuary, which is which is a disgusting. Rundown town. It's a hobo village. It's, yeah, it has like an old main street with like dirty buildings, and all the houses are like like falling apart and trashy. But it's a it's a town where it's not incorporated in the United States. <laughs> it's completely off the grid. It's autonomous to any local or or federal authorities. In, in fact, the paper sign outside of the town says "No one welcome." <laughs> Non-residence prohibited? <laughs> How the fuck does that work? You live your life, you make millions of dollars in the mob, you're a successful career criminal, and then you, you go to retire in a rusty shack. <laughs> <laughs> in a town with a population of 500. Tell me how you like them. Uh, poached. <laughs> Clean up your kitchen if it's going to be on camera. Oh, oh this God. is horrible. What the hell? So how have you been, Dad? Great, great, just great. Thanks. My <laughs> life of crime did not pay off. <laughs> I'm living in a shack. But... I'm really proud of my house. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
my shack is crumbling around me, and my sanity is dwindling every day, but... This looks like the worst place on Earth to live. Maybe Syria. But <laughs> or Florida. This is a second, yeah, yeah. Why would the mob bosses spend their millions of dollars on this? Why would our villains of the movie choose to make this their hangout? Well, well it, the villains in the movie, the biker gang, has chosen to make this their hangout because apparently the U.S. government has no reach in this town. There, there's a biker gang led by a guy named... Kincaid. Kincaid. Ooh. That was good. Ooh, I could remember Nice that. job, Rich. Yeah. Uh, who looks like uh, Carl from Die Hard. Uh, the big, big, tall German guy whose real name is Werner Herzog. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Werner Herzog. Werner Herzog. <laughs> I look into the eyes of Leo Fogg and I see nothing but darkness. <laughs> he leads a biker gang and the biker gang in the very beginning does a drug deal where they have big uh, 500 kilos of the top grade shit. <laughs> they say something like that, right? Half a million dollars worth. So, what do we got going? Dawson and the dealer girl, Paul Blades, is coming with 50 kilos of pure shit. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. There you go. <laughs> They're fertilizing. <so> it's <laughs> That's not how you describe good things, there sir. There is no corn. <laughs> This movie is 50 kilos of pure shit. Oh! oh snap! 50 weeks. Wow! <laughs> Headphone drop? <laughs> they were by my head. I didn't notice them. Yeah. We never see them selling it. They just steal the money and the drugs. Yes. Yeah, so, and so, so in the next scene, when we see the gang, they're strapped for cash. <laughs> strapped for cash, yes. And they're robbing like the, the local like uh, <laughs> convenience store and flower shop for $11. Oh! Oh! Uh, news alert. News flash. <laughs> this, uh, wait, this just in. <laughs> this, this just in. Mike just remembered something. It's, this is important. This is a big deal. Okay. Uh, we've often mentioned the phrase, Oh, yeah. Shoot the rodeo. And, and, and everybody's remembering now. Mm -hmm. uh, the Shoot the Rodeo comes from a film called The Chooper? Well, the movie's called Blood Shack. The, movie's the, called the villain Blood in Shack. the killer is called The Chooper. Connie? And it's a slow budget movie where they, they take their cameras out and they film a real live rodeo that's happening. Like the rodeo came into town when they were filming the movie. Yeah. Yes. Well, the story, if we want to get technical about it, the story is they shot the movie, realized it was too short, so they needed some more footage to pad out the runtime. There happened to be a rodeo coming to town, so they just filmed a bunch of B-roll of the actual rodeo just to pad out the runtime. And so we've adopted that phrase as being shoot the rodeo. Yes. When a movie is just filming stuff to pad the runtime. It's not just as, the, adds production, adds production value. value. Oh, look, yeah. look, well, there's a big rodeo. It's part of our movie. Yeah, it's not just big to pad the runtime. budget we have. We got horses and a crowd and yeah. Yeah, not just to pad the runtime, to give it some production value. Right. And this film, there is literally a rodeo and they are literally shooting the rodeo. So we are amazed that it actually happened. Look at that man counting dollar bills. That is certainly right there at the rodeo. <laughs> look, at, look at that dramatic counting bill action. He's counting his money. Remember, he's counting his money. He's like one dollar. He's totally <laughs> in the ticket booth for the he's rodeo. In the, yeah. Yes, he's he's counting those dollar bills, and he has he has forty two dollars. And Kincaid and his get biker gang rob him for forty two dollars, and they murder him. Mm -hmm. And then they hang out in the town for weeks. They say it's Months. like three four weeks. <laughs> it's been at least I think it's been at least seven weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, Something very important that I think you've glossed over is this town is full of nothing but very, very old people. This is our new home. Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the? All the buildings are ready to collapse. <laughs> oh, this is it, guys. We've made it. We've made it. We've made it to. <laughs> Most of the runtime of the movie is made up of these bikers going into an establishment and fucking with the owners and pushing over elderly people. This is America, asshole. Yeah, and so Loblo is then contacted by... Uh, Richard Lynch. Richard Lynch, mm -hmm. who is the 
quote unquote sheriff of sanctuary, the, a town with no cops or law. So he says, low blow, this biker gang is coming to town. Help me take care of it. Low blow comes to the town. And three weeks later, <laughs> nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, he's just there and he does nothing for yeah. the longest time. It's, it's the most passive we've ever seen Loblo. He lets so many old people get beat up. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You know what we're talking about, old man. You know you got all your money stashed in that trailer. We've seen this 80 times! <laughs> we know that the gang is fucking with the locals! <laughs> we know that! Oh my god. Oh my lord. There's a lot of elderly abuse in this film. Yeah. Not as funny as you would expect, though. Because it's, <laughs> it's just so awkwardly shot. For, for a town full of, like, former mafia hitmen, you'd, you'd think they'd just start shooting the bikers themselves. Yeah. Kate and his gang aren't just your ordinary scumbags. Well, they're like a well-organized army. No, they're not! <laughs> what? They're a scuzzy biker gang! <laughs> just shoot them and be done with it! No one has any guns. It's weird. Not they do. They pull occasionally. They pull guns on the bad guys and then just don't shoot them. No, oh, yeah. Not not just former mafia hitmen, but former mafia hitmen living in a town with literally no laws. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You think they'd get have their secret mafia meeting and the town's like, let's kill all these motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would have been a much better movie. Oh, yeah. that would have been great. Like, you you get, see like, them all the, walking down Main Street, pulling out their guns. You yeah. get the twist halfway through that it's the mob town and they yeah. themselves take care that, of the problem. That, that is what you predicted and that is what did not happen. I know, because the so, movie sucked. The ironic part is that Sanctuary Nevada is filled with former criminals when it really feels like it's like a town filled with pacifists because mm. they do nothing. <laughs> hey, old man, I'm a good cat. I'm filthy rich. You're filthy, all right. And then remember Loblo comes in and he wounds the one guy with the gun and there's Kincaid and they're threatening the one girl with the butcher knife on the neck and the flower shop and Loblo's like, you go for now. I'll get you later. Yeah. Right. Uh, I don't have all night, Loblo. <laughs> Loblo we gotta watch Max Magician and the Legend of the Ring. There's so many other films to Come watch. on, Leo Fong, get move on. I've had a long day, I need some rest. We, uh, Loblo gets a little partner for some of the movie, uh, a young girl whose father is a former mafia enforcer. Well, she's very upset because her father gets exploded into another dimension. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a couple minutes before you start to sing up. Don't tell me the truck's gonna explode now because of this. Oh. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, movie, you're gonna do this? Well, I guess I'll try starting it now. Oh my god! <laughs> that was a spectacular flip. Did, <laughs> Did it disappear? Well, it's a weird transition because I thought his car was in front of his house. So, it, but it was at the mechanics. Yeah. So when it explodes, it does this like dissolve to his house. And I thought the car just vanished. Motorcycle gang killed him today. He vanished in an improbable explosion. <laughs> oh, the entire car was atomized. <laughs> Listen, honey, it's called the quantum realm. <laughs> <laughs> We're sending Ant-Man in to find it. We don't know. Well, can we talk about the girl, uh, the daughter of the guy who gets blown up in the truck? Yeah. Let's call her Tammy. Tammy, okay, we, we should give her a That's name. That's not her name. The lady's name, we'll call her Tammy. She goes to the bar, the local bar, um, and then she almost gets raped. Uh -huh. Where's James Long? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Lobo isn't really, he's not carrying his weight in this film. Oh. There he is. He, he got lost. That's he's, why. He's, he's taking a dump behind he was, him. He's, <laughs> where is he? He looks like he's carrying a lot of weight to me. <laughs> uh, he was he was climbing up a dirty hill. Like, where do you think he <laughs> He's beating up homeless. <laughs> <laughs> why? These guys don't have anything to do with the gang. We the don't gang know that. is the problem, not they, these homeless these guys. might be the gang. Not Aren't they? they? 
the fuck you gonna do with that? How would you like a shovel head? How would you like a shovel head? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> That's your big line? <laughs> yes, it was. He spent days thinking of that. <laughs> <laughs> but he rescues Tammy from being raped, and then she stays in his his trailer, yes. his uh, Winnebago, yeah. whatever. Sure. Does Lobo own a, a trailer slash Winnebago? Yes. Because we never seen him drive it into town. No, he drives his little. Uh, his he little has a. Car. He has like a, a Honda Accord. Or how did he get the trailer into oh town? Oh my god. He has a Toyota Corolla. <laughs> so does he drive two cars? <laughs> did he rent the trailer? Is like that their hotel in the town? Uh, just a trailer? That's all they got? A dirty it's trailer? a fucking dump. Did he drive the, the Toyota Corolla into Sanctuary yeah. and then Uber back sure. to wherever he came from, then get his, his Win Winnebago yeah. and take his Winnebago back to Perfection, Nevada. Per perfect. <laughs> but Where then, the tremors are. The, and then the tremor ate the truck that was carrying the Winnebago, so he had to drive and his the, first car. Uh, yeah. 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 The tremor eventually ate the Winnebago. We, uh, or, I'm or sorry, the, the what? The Winnebago. The, Winnebago. The, the, <laughs> the tremor ate the Toyota Corolla at some point. <laughs> yeah. I if like only it. Loblo could have lured Kincaid out into the desert so that a tremor oh. could have swallowed him up. <laughs> We would have solved the whole problem. Mike, you're going full Uper here, and I just got to say, I'm with it. I'm with it. I would bet all those Harley Davidsons out on the desert made a whole bunch of sounds, you know? And that would uh, attract all the tremors to the Harley Davidsons and swallow up all the biker games. And then you know what? No more tremor worries for me. Yeah, That's yeah. Loblo says, I got a plan. I got a plan, Richard Lynch. Yeah. We gotta call up my friend Kevin. Does your Bacon. plan involve fire? No, Richard. <laughs> oh, thank God. It involves ancient <laughs> dinosaurs that live in Nevada. Well, Mr. Long, you're either really tough or really stupid because what you did today was crazy. And then she stays in his his trailer, yeah. his uh, Winnebago, yeah. whatever, and she's eating a cereal. This is all you had in the kitchen. What do you live on? I don't eat breakfast. Um, and then he says, I never eat breakfast. Why does he have cereal if he never eats breakfast? <laughs> he eats it for dinner. He might, he might have cereal for lunch. <laughs> he, just he might just be really lazy. You yeah. just have an answer for everything. <laughs> <laughs> the Picard show in this. He, he likes making Rice Krispie treats. Oh. Hey, there you go. Whatever we do, we better do it fast. Stop this carnage. Let's go. Stop okay. this carnage. Yes, do something fast. <laughs> Please do anything fast. They've spent two months. We haven't done jack shit. It's been two months and they've killed threes of old people. Uh. So we, we have Sheriff and Girl and Loblo, and they're going to take down the biker gang who spent the last 90 minutes terrorizing old people. That's right. So after no buildup, they just go to the bad guy's warehouse and they shoot everybody. Well, they shoot off camera, and then later they get shots of other people getting shots that are completely disconnected. Yes, but they murder a lot of this biker gang. and then Everybody it's... except for Kincaid, That's who, right. who gets away. Mm -hmm. Jimmy got I think we got them all. No, Kincaid got away. Kincaid got away. Yeah. I'm going after him. How about yourself? Okay. Yeah, it's between me and him. I'm going Shit. after him. <laughs> He's so passionate <laughs> about his films. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's between me and him. Yeah, it's between me and him, I guess. How did Kim Kate get here? Who are all these ladies? This is like a titty bar. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Kate would rather be here than at the shootout. Well, I mean, sure. Right, we would all rather be here, but... But, but where is he? And why... In the mood for some fun, cowboy. This is a brothel? Hey, this is Kim Kate. Get me Watson. He's coming in. I'll be here in about two minutes. Who is this? Who? What? Where? What's going on? What is wow. happening? What's going on? This afternoon, I thought the deal was going down in two days. Yeah, it's okay by me if it's okay with Clutch. Yeah. But there's an actor in the film who also goes. 
<laughs> well, he's talking on the phone. Oh, yeah, there's Don Jr. who's, you know. But he doesn't. Yeah. It's like, pers- like a cow chewing cut or something. Uh, yeah. He doesn't because he's like, he just did six lines of blow before the take. He's like, <laughs> Maybe it's like Mr. Ed and they put peanut butter in his mouth. <laughs> just so they could dub over his lines later. Why are things still happening? What things are happening? I want to know why things are still happening. <laughs> we've had our, we've had our, you know, our major action shootout finale of the movie. Yeah. The only thing, the only thing that's left for the movie to do is to have uh, Leo Fong confront Kincaid for the final showdown. Right. This time and it's personal. Our, this time it's personal. It's the final showdown, and then the plot starts. Yep. Yep. <laughs> In the last 15 minutes of the movie. <laughs> where, where, where Kincaid sets up this this giant drug deal mm-hmm. between new characters we haven't seen before. Uh, Someone who licks his lips constantly, mm-hmm. and then and then some guy who looks a little bit like a brother love without a tan. Freeze! Uh, there's a shootout in a warehouse. The shootout happens. Kincaid leaves. So Kincaid runs away, and instead of running after Kincaid, Leo Fong runs to an old bartender in a bar. <laughs> hey, have you seen Kincaid, the tall guy? Well, I've seen you him a couple of times. Just there. <laughs> but uh, not for uh, a few days. What? Did after that last scene, did Leo Fong just stop chasing him? He just, yes. He left where he was, then went to an unrelated bar to ask where he is. What? <laughs> it's like the scenes are out of order. <laughs> oh, he's not dead. How'd you know where to find this guy? Th- that's what the bartender just told him. Why did the bartender know where to find this guy? <laughs> Then the lip-lipping douche bro tells Leo Fong where to find Kincaid, which Reluctantly, happened- even though Kincaid tried to murder him. Yes. That, that led to the, what may be the longest consecutive Rich Evans laughter moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, all right, all right, man. He's in the warehouse on Carson Street. You know the warehouse you were just in? <laughs> <laughs> No, he's not in the warehouse on Carson Street. (laughs) (laughs) He's in a red parking lot. Did he just stumble across (laughs) it? (laughs) (laughs) He's running. running. Oh no, he's in the warehouse. This is that same warehouse. Yeah, it is. Jesus Christ. This is God. madness. <laughs> this is insanity. <laughs> <laughs> this is pathetic. It was yeah. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> He's just trying to break into a car. Just randomly. <laughs> <laughs> Look how Pog just runs after him. <laughs> he stopped looking for him. To go ask where he was. <laughs> <laughs> Not he looking. Was, he stopped he chasing him. He, he knew where he was. Him to ask where he was. It, yeah. Only to be told he was where he oh, was. Oh, he's in the spot where you were chasing him, low blow. <laughs> just, just, go, just go back to where you were chasing him. He's still there. I know. <laughs> wait, wait. You're arresting him. You just shot everybody else! (laughs) I've had a long day, I need some rest.